page map. There we go. And we are live. I want to thank everyone for tuning in to a very special edition of Off the Record on the People's Podcast this evening. We have a wonderful guest with us tonight, one who's going to give us some amazing information as well as inspiration. And that is none other than the incredible Sister Claudette Marie Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum, ma'am. Well, alaikum salam, sir. This means so much to myself, my family, and the viewing audience that you would take time out of your busy schedule to come have a conversation with us about what took place 27 years ago. Uh, the first question that we have for you, ma'am, is what, how did you feel when you heard the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan say that he was calling for a million man march? Well, first, let me open it. Assalamu alaikum. Giving all honor and praise to the God of our universe, who is indeed the head of all of our lives. I can never thank him enough for coming in the person of Master Farad Muhammad, to whom praises are forever due. And I thank him for raising up one who we've been taught went any further than the fourth grade, but yet he educated the heart and mind to many, many, many members of the human family to come into the knowledge of self. I think that's none other than the great Mufti, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And I thank them both for giving to us one of the most precious gifts any of us can receive, that is the Messiah in the present day dispensation, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. In their name and in the name of all those whose shoulders we stand on, I greet each and every one of you who's looking at the station today. And to you, my dear brother, the greetings of Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam, ma'am. Okay, yes, ma'am. So the question for you, Sir Claudette, is how did you feel when the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan made the call for a million Black men to meet him in Washington, D.C.? Well, I felt so, so energetic to know that Allah had given him the vision to have the Million Man March. And I was very excited to know that so many people, we all were saying that a million men are gonna come. We didn't have any doubt in our mind. Mm, mm. Then when he called and asked me if I would work and be a part of it, I said, yes, indeed. And then he gave me my assignment and I was deeply touched for him to have that kind of faith and trust in me as the national deputy director of the Million Man March. Mm. Okay, great. Yes, ma'am. Answer to Claudette, for those of us who weren't there, could you please explain to us what the national deputy of the Million Man, like what, what does that, what did your, what that entail? Well, uh, Dr. Benjamin Chavis was the national director mm. and I was the national deputy director. Mm. And we worked together for the success of the Million Man March. We were able to get a facility, the Phi Beta Sigma fraternity, and uh, we used their second floor. And we called for brothers and sisters, men and men in the Nation of Islam, women as well, to come in and work. So that's what we did. We did the work that was necessary, you know, writing papers and getting people to come in and work and myself going out speaking to various groups it was just a lot a lot of work and uh the various agencies the various department heads we all came together there having meetings and as volunteers came in we were asked them what field did they want to work in and then we would send them to the different departments you know so everyone could have people to work with it it's not any one person that did the Million Man March. It was a collaboration of many coming together, bringing their talents and their willingness to work. Oh, praise you, so yes, ma'am. Thank you. Claudette, uh, on behalf of myself, my family and the viewing audience, we thank a lot for your sacrifice, many sacrifices and the sacrifices of your family as well, ma'am. I wanted to ask you, there are many people who wanna go in the community and connect with the LOCs and try to do work um, with different church organizations. What advice would you give to us about how to properly connect with different organizations? Well, what I would like to say, my suggestion, my humble suggestion, is most cities, major cities in the United States has a mosque under the leadership of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. 
And if a person is interested in an LLC, interested in being a part of the LLC, they should call, I feel, they should call the minister of that mosque. Mm. And the minister of that mosque and tell them how to get in touch with the LLC in that city. Perfect. All praises due to Allah. Both of my sisters, Miriam and Naima, send the greetings to you, ma'am. And Brother, Give Samuel, Brother Samuel X. Clark says he remembers being proud of his fraternity, Phi Beta Sigma, founded in that significant year of 1914. Thank you, sir. And yeah. thank your organization for hosting um, us there. Sister Claudette, were you ever nervous or did you ever face fear that um, on what a million Black men would be like in America, I mean, at the Was in Washington, October 16th. Did you ever fear that? No, I never feared it. <laughs> the joy. I knew it was going to happen, you know, because Allah gave the minister the vision. <laughs> and all the minister did was start to work. And one of the first things that he did was, of course, uh, apprise his, his staff and his board and appoint myself and others to different positions. P appointed Ms. Dr. Benjamin Chavis to his appointment. And then he flew to Washington, D.C. And he met with the Honorable Mayor Marion Barry and uh, his chief of staff, Brother Leonard F. Muhammad, uh, accompanied him and brother, his son, Brother Mustafa, who was the assistant Supreme Captain at the time, and myself as the chief of protocol. And the minister met with the mayor and the mayor turned the city over to the Million Man March. When I said turn the city, he opened the city to the Million Man March. Mm -hmm. And the city government, the Washington DC city government, he had said if there was anything that we need for help from them, they would be accessible. Beautiful, all praises due to Allah. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. How, how important was the role of the sisters, the women, in supporting the Million Man March? Well, that's a little thing I'm a little concerned about because the sisters were very, 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 very involved. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, you saw women. I forgot how many exactly it was, including my granddaughter, the 10-year-old that you saw reciting the poem by yes, Dr. Maya Angelou. That's my baby. But uh, women who worked very, very hard, Dr. Maya Angelou, uh, Linda Boyd, Reverend Dr. Barbara Skinner, so many, so many, so many. Uh, Sister Brenda D. Muhammad in the Nation of Islam, Sister Nisa Islam, you name them, they were there working. All of us came in to work it together. Uh, the sister captains from the various cities, you know, Minister Farrakhan uh, gave an instruction. Sisters couldn't come into the to the event unless they were coming to work. So the sisters that came, Sister Nisa Islam registered all those sisters. That's a job in itself, you know? Mm -hmm. Ife, Dr. Ife Williams, I could just call the role. I mean, there's so many, and I don't want anyone thinking I'm leaving them out, but uh, at 84, you know, my memory can just go so far. <laughs> yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am, beautiful. Praise be to Allah. And one of the brothers said, what is your, um, how is your granddaughter doing today? Well, my granddaughter is doing very well. She's, uh, she's over a health uh, spa. It's a national health spa. And she travels and matter of fact, she just came from a, uh, a conference in Dallas, Texas. But it was so wonderful. She's married now. She got married about three years ago. And her son is, four, well, he's 16. Mm. Uh, I'm sure they all watched it. I haven't talked to them, but I'm sure they all watched it. And her husband probably was thrilled to see her at 10 years of old, citing that point by Dr. Angelo. And I'd like to let you just know, and those who are watching, uh, Minister Farrakhan called me one day and asked me to get Dr. Angelo on the phone. And he told me to stay on the line. And he explained to her why he wanted a young girl like that. I think the movie had just come out for uh, Samuel Jackson and the little girl was raped. His daughter was raped by a Caucasian, mm -hmm. killed him. And then there was a, the whole movie was about his court case. But anyway, uh, she said that she had the actress who could perform that role. And then Safarakhan said, well, once her agent find out it's me, 
that uh, she probably would re renege. And uh, Dr. Mangela said, no, no, she, she'll still do it. And two weeks before the march, guess what? We got a telephone call. She wasn't going to do it. Mm. So we're saying, my goodness, what are we going to do? So the minister and I were talking. I was here at my residence in Washington, D.C. And my granddaughter was with me. She said, what are you all talking about? I hear you talking to the minister. I said, yes. She said, what's, what's he kind of sad about? I said, he said because he wanted a young girl to recite the poem by Dr. Maya Angelou. And she said, well, what happened to her? I said, she, her agent told her she couldn't come. She said, agent? I don't need no agent. I can do it myself. <laughs> and so the minister said, what did she say? I said, she said she could do it herself. He said, get her ready. Mm. So she got ready. You see what she did? All praises and so uh, exclusive stories. That's all right. Go ahead, Sister Claudette. Thank you very much for that. Brother, uh, people are showing you love all across the country. I can't wait to put this on YouTube so people can let us know where, what city they're watching from. Brother Nelson Ramos gives the greetings from Massachusetts. Sister Maya Abdul Rahman. Sister Naima says, All praise to Allah. Sister Patricia says, All praise to Allah. Thank you very much. Okay, now, Sister Claudette, we just have three more questions for you, but we have. I want, want, may, may I just say this? Yes, uh, Dr. Maya Angelou wrote the poem, and Minister Farrakhan uh, add the last three sentences to the poem. Mm. Yeah. Perfect. Yes, ma'am. Now we have a quick 60 second commercial break, Sister Claudette, and then we're coming back to you for our last three questions. Thank everyone who's there, and a special thanks to Sister Desiree and the MDT of MOS number four who've assisted us today in making this great interview happen. Thank you, Sister Captain, uh, Student Captain Sadika. Sister Stephanie and all of the believers who, who consistently show love and support to our sister, Sister Claudette. Thank you very much. One second, quick 60 second commercial break. Boom, here we go. Brother Rashad, street premiere. He has a 4K camera and a drone. He does television and film editing. Please reach out to him if you need any of those services. Sister Miriam's ABC I Love Me, children's book and coloring book, and now Spanish book. All three available on Amazon.com. Sister Naima's Stay On Point Dance Academy, LLC. She teaches ballet virtually to young girls all across the country, right here in the studios of Atlanta, Georgia. Rock Communications. If you're working on a book and you need copy, editing, project management, content development, or media relations, please reach out to Rock Communications. Student Minister Robert L. Muhammad's Conflict Mediation, Squashing the Beast Throughout the Southwest Region, he does a phenomenal job. His wife, Sister Fudia Muhammad's Giving Birth to a God and the Science of Child Rearing. Please make sure you go out and get a copy of her book as well. Fashion Gods, Urban Streetwear Clothing for Men and Boys, 314-329-6009. He'll keep you dressed in the best of fashion. Brother Kenneth's bow tie maker extraordinaire. He'll ship you bow ties anywhere across the nation. Taj Hollywood's Chemistry 6 episode, a new television series out on YouTube. He's looking for actors and writers. Make sure you support him. Keep it hood, helping others overcome depression. Also by Taj Hollywood. Brother Aaron's Elevated Places, Stress Management, Real Estate, Credit, Repair, and Restoration. His Respect for Life Center, they do personal wellness, philosophy, emotional, and mental spiritual wellness. 229-344-1474. Dr. Henry Carter's King Henry Turkey Legs, right here in Atlanta, Georgia. Brother Rashad Muhammad's COVID-19 Disinfected Cleaning Services out of Chicago. Student Minister Sharif Muhammad's book, A Soldier in the Movement of Christ, available on adulsharif.com. And lastly, Brother Joshua Muhammad's book, Cleopatra, as well as No Father, No Excuse, both available on Amazon. Perfect. And thank you all for watching. And Sister Claudette, we have people from Colombia watching, uh, all the way from Colombia, Bogota, Colombia. Thank you, Tyree Trevor, Glenn, Moss number 35, Brother George X, uh, Brother Samuel. Thank you. The movie was called A Time to Kill. 
and people are showing you love all across the country. Thank you, Sister Claudette, mm -hmm. and thank, thank you for you to watch. My next question for you, ma'am, is how did you handle people who may have been detractors of the march or who didn't receive before the May Man March, who didn't receive the minister's invitation? Well, how did you handle that? Well, that's very interesting. You know, I, I have thick skin. I don't have thin skin. But it came a time, you know, because of my love for my minister, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, it's very painful when we hear people say negative things about him when he's trying his best to do so much for his people. I have been with him now for 40 something years, 40 years. All praise is good to Allah. All and I have seen him help so many people, people who are not in the nation of Islam. I did come a little stressful because here again, I was working with a lot of men and sometimes men, it's not that they don't have respect for women, they have respect, but you know, the man is the power. <laughs> the woman is the power too, but I think anyone who's listening, they understand what I'm saying. So when I did get that way, uh, Dr. My, uh, Dr. Dorothy Height, she would always call me just to see how everything was going. And so one day she, she asked me to come into her office. She said she could hear in my voice that I sounded a little despondent. And I told her, yes, I was a little sad because I heard how people were saying things about the minister. And you know what she said? She said, well, take the words and flush them down the toilet. She says, don't let that get to you. She says, the minister Farquhar gave you a position and he would expect you to come and fill that position and don't allow anyone to cause you to step, step back because that's what people are trying to do. They're trying to make a, a, a fence around the minister where nobody we can't really do what we're supposed to do by him. Mm. He says, I'm a woman and I've been ahead of this organization for a long time. And I know what women go through when they're in a leadership position. And she says, I have sent a letter out to the members of the National Council of Negro Women. And I've asked them to support the Minister Farrakhan in the Million Man March. And she says, I've written a letter to the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and letting him know the National Council of Negro Women are fully in support of him. So I said, thank you. And I walked away from that flying like an eagle. <laughs> oh, praises due to a lot. Beautiful. And thank you once again, Sister Claudette, for your uh, dedication, your perseverance uh, for that, uh, for your person, I mean, for your role. My next question is for young sisters and young women who aspire to help not just in the nation, but in any leadership of any organization, what advice would you give to women on accepting responsibility and being in leadership? Well, I think women, uh, whatever their goal may be, if they want to join an organization, and even if they don't want to join an organization, just be a living example for them, for their family members. Mm, mm. And if they're married with children, be a living example for their children. And if, and if they would like to join an organization, join their organization and find out where, where they would be placed. What is it mm -hmm. they could do? And also meet with the head of the organization and talk with the head of the organization and find out, let them know what they can do and just go from there. Excellent advice. Yes, ma'am. So Claudette, we have two more questions for you, ma'am. My next question for you is, we saw you all on Facebook and on people's phones during the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan's recent trip to Washington, D.C. Um, what, what was that experience like still after all these years working with him, oh. working with uh, uh, Mayor Marion Barry's family and things of that nature? What was that like? Well, Mrs. Cora Masters Barry called me and said that she wanted to have something in July. Uh, her husband's memorial is standing right in front of the district building on Pennsylvania Avenue, well, off of 14th and Pennsylvania Avenue. And so I suggested to the minister, he would like to, he said he would like to do it, but uh, July was too soon because she asked me that in June. Mm. So we selected a date and that was for uh, the 16th, I think it was the 16th of this month. And uh, wait a minute, was the 16th of this month? I get kind of confused here. Oh, last month, last month. Last month, 16th last month. And uh, minister, came to pay his respect to the statue and also to pay his respect at the funeral site 
of uh, Mary Mary and Barry. Yes, ma'am. We had about 300 people there. It was wonderful. And uh, then he went to uh, Brother Dick Gregory's burial site. Mm. He laid wreaths mm. at each one of them. And then he went to uh, Dr. Dorothy Heights grave site. And then Sheba Holly, Haley is a sister who does public relations. Her son just got killed not too long ago. I think it might have been a car accident, I'm not sure. And I asked the minister if he would also lay a wreath at her son's. And he said, yes, I would do that. Who is it? And I said, it's near where Dr. Height is buried. So that was the last stop that he made. And he did prayer. And the mother was so, so, so deeply. And we really have to commend her because she worked with Mrs. Berry and myself mm. in putting all that together. And now her son was just buried not too long ago. So here she was out there at the gravesite and all these people putting this work together. I mean, you could imagine what she might've been feeling like. Yes, ma'am. Did that to help the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan. All praises due to Allah. Oh, praises due to Allah. Yes, ma'am. Excellent. People were showing you love. Sister Lorraine says, happy uh, Holy Day of Atonement all the way from Delaware. And people continue to show you love all across the country. Long live the spirit of the Million Man March. Sister uh, Claudette, my last question for you, ma'am, is after what can people like myself and others who weren't at the Million Man March, what would you tell us? For Because everybody who says it's the most glorious day, it was beautiful, it was amazing. For people who weren't there, what would you say? How would you describe the Million Man March to us? I would say the Million Man March was just, it's not a, it's no word to explain it. Mm. You know, it was just perfect. It was like a, like someone painted a, a portrait and everyone fit right into the portrait. Mm. And to see the, the mothers and the women who got up and spoke and my granddaughter uh, at the mosque in Mosque Maryam today in Chicago, they had the beautiful uh, service. Minister Ishmael did a terrific service. And a young sister uh, spoke, and she named all the women who spoke, uh, one of which was my granddaughter. I was so happy about that. Yes, ma'am. The fact that she named off all the women. So it just gave women to see how we've been elevated in the Million Man March and how Minister Farrakhan putting a woman <laughs> as the National Deputy Director of the Million Man March, that says a lot in terms of elevating women. Oh, praises do to Allah. Well, may Allah continue to bless you and your family, Sister Claudette, and the believers in Washington, D.C. Uh, we love you. And if there's anything that you need, we're always one call away, ma'am. This means so much to me, myself, my family, the viewing audience of the People's Podcast, that you would take time out of your busy schedule to come on with us and give us this amazing information and inspiration. This is Joshua Leonard Muhammad signing off for the People's Podcast. Assalamu alaikum, ma'am. God is love. Alaikum salam. Beautiful. Thank you all for watching.